So let me show you the library in SoundMiner just to show you a little bit about how the metadata is laid out for SoundMiner users. And then we'll look at the spreadsheets in a minute for other users. But if you're a SoundMiner user, you'll find a lot of metadata in various fields. And I just want to walk you through it. So the file name is in UCS format at the moment. I know that some people don't like that format. So what I've done under era and user comments is I prepared two different alternate file names, which you could easily use the workflow copy field and just copy it back into the file name. Under era, you'll find one that has the cat ID, the name of the country, and then just the effects name itself, along with the initials of the recordist. Under the file name, you'll see that you have the full name of each recordist, but here we're just using initials. Under user comments is an even simpler version, which just has the category, so it's not the full cat ID, but just the category, city and state and country, and the effects name. So this would be the one that a lot of people might prefer, so if you want to use that, you can. Then as we move across all the fields, you'll see that every record has a cat ID, the short ID, which is just the category, category subcategory, category full, which is a hyphenated version of this, uh, track title, which is simply the first three words of the effects name. So this is pretty rough in a lot of places, but some people like to use this as a very short abbreviation. Uh, again, I didn't tweak these at all, so it's literally just the first three words taken from effects name and pasted here. At some point, somebody might go through and tidy all these up, and we might offer them as a sort of optional download. But for now, it's just a, another field that's available. The description, as it was written. The designer. The designer initials. Now, this is a field that's unique to my database, so you may not have this. In fact, I'm pretty sure you won't. Um, but I also copied these into the field called long ID, which is available in pretty much every SoundMiner database. So you can look there as well. Show I set to none, libraries, my home CS. The microphone data as delivered by each recordist. I haven't tweaked to clean this up. Uh, this is just a, a way if you are interested to see what they recorded with. The location. Now the location is formatted country, um, potentially province, then city. Sort of backwards, but I'll show you why that's done in a second. Under the notes field, I just have the country itself. So if you wanted to copy that somewhere else or use just the country, you could. Keywords as they were delivered, or in some cases, as SoundMiner has filled them in. If people didn't supply keywords, SoundMiner usually fills it in with some of the information for the file name. The manufacturer is set like this for a reason, so that in the future, if we wanted to update some metadata or push out new metadata, you, have, you may not want to change this because you'll have to have this in this position for the pushing metadata to work. I've built out the broadcast wave description to be fairly long, but it, some people may have only have access to this in their programs. So... Um, City, country, description, designer, or recordist here at the end. So that's in broadcast wave. Under librarian only, again, is a field that you won't have. This is basically what I where I built the final folder names. So it's not that useful to you, but it is in there. Um, URL. So this is kind of fun. If I open up in SoundMiner, at least under the uh, metadata browser, you'll see that basically every one of the records has a URL. And if I click this, you'll see that basically it opens a map and shows me where that was recorded. Now, I've only preserved city and country for the most part. Some people had sent in really exact coordinates. I didn't preserve all those. We really just narrowed it down to city and country. That's all we asked for and all we really wanted. Um, anything that didn't come with artwork already now has a little map tile as well, which shows you a little sort of map of where in the world that sound is. I can't promise that all of these are perfectly accurate. Um, Justin Drury helped to do most of this information and uh, we think we got most of it right. But there were a few things that got a little weird when when the GPS coordinates were trying to be assigned and stuff. So I think we fixed them all. I think he fixed most of them, but I can't promise that there aren't some potential things. Now, if people had supplied pictures, that's what will be there instead. But if you um, go to the artwork window and pull this out, what you'll see is that basically you have pictures and or little maps for pretty much every file in the library. So one thing that's pretty cool in versions, I think 6.00 or higher, or build 6.00 or higher, uh, is that Justin's done a little bit of work on the left panel here. So um, because it's formatted now country, province, city in that sort of order, what it enables you to do is to browse the library by location in a pretty cool way. So if I call up the location, field under the filter search here, the linked search. Here are all the countries that are represented. And if I want to see all the files from, uh, let's pick Germany, I can click Germany. And now I have all the files from Germany. And if I turn the arrow down next to Germany, here's all the cities. 
in Germany where files were recorded. So here I want to call up just Berlin, or here I want to call up just the files from Hamburg. Okay, so um, Justin's done a bunch more work on linking these various parts. So this now updates as you change and go through things and different things like that. But just want to show you that this is a pretty cool way to browse all the files in the library. So here's Copenhagen. And if I want to go to Estonia. So that's why the files are organized with their location sort of backwards to what you may expect is to allow some, something like this. So that's the library in Soundliner. All of this metadata is embedded and it's also all been exported to various um, CSV and TSV spreadsheets. So non-Soundminer users still have access to all of this metadata. So let me show you that really quick. In the uh, Getting Started folder, you'll see a folder that's called Metadata Spreadsheets. And in here, we have uh, three different versions, one for Basehead, one for Soundminer, and one that says General. Now, the Soundminer metadata is already all embedded, so you won't really need to ever come to this, but just to show you if I wanted to open it, um, you'll find a version for the WAVE copies of the library and a flat copy, and one for the Atmos bonus files, which again are only in WAVE. So let me take, for example, the metadata for the WAVE copy of the library, and let me tell it to open in Numbers. What you'll see is that these are all of the fields exported from SoundMiner, just like I showed a minute ago in SoundMiner. So if you wanted to take these columns information and somehow use them for other purposes or to rename them and import them into some other program, you could. So these are the exact fields as they are stored in SoundMiner. So again, notes, which is holding the country, things like that, including the GPS coordinates, URLs, uh, librarian only. So again, you won't really need to interact with this much because all of this information is already embedded into SoundMiner. So if you're a SoundMiner user, you won't have to access this for much. But let me show you what we're calling the generic version of this as well. So let me open this one that's called the generic copy. And what you see is that it's the exact same information, but the field names or the columns have now been renamed to something a little more descriptive. So instead of saying era and user comments, basically what I'm storing in them is an alternate file name one and an alternate file name two. So the only difference between these two spreadsheets is the name of these columns. I've just renamed them to be a little more descriptive of what's actually included in them. So for example, uh, instead of this saying notes, it says country, because that's actually what I'm storing there. Same thing here. This is map URL, user URL. Some users had a URL to their web page, which I've included here. Um, this is the folder name that was built, sort of how it was built behind the scenes. So. Again, all this information is just stored in this CSV in case you want to use it for something else. And lastly, uh, a user named Nicola Tahan, who's uh, living in Denmark, I'm sure I spelled his name wrong, um, took the time to map all of these fields into Basehead. So if I open this, this is the TSV tab separated value. But if I open this in numbers, you'll see that he's prepared it in such a way that you could import, incorporate all this metadata directly into certain fields in Basehead. So he's mapped designer to artist here you see the name underneath here of the original field and where he's mapped it so category track title becomes cd title all file name goes to comments librarian only which is the folder name goes to composer description uh, designer keywords so not every single thing is mapped but uh, he did the best job of mapping the various fields into fields that will work inside basehead so microphone, manufacturer location, these things all exist in base head, it looks like. So you can still use all of those. So take gets the another alternate file name, URL goes into scene, things like that. So I'm not a base head user, so I can't tell you exactly how to import this. But hopefully if you are a base head user, you know already how to do this. But you should be able to get this information into base head if you're a base head user. So another folder that's in the getting started uh, download is this folder called photo by recordus. And this basically is a uh, a set of all of the photos as they were submitted by each recordist. Now, if you're using SoundMiner or I believe Basehead, you'll be able to see the artwork that was embedded. But a lot of people sent many more photos than they did sounds. It became way too cumbersome to try to copy them all over into each recordist folder because of the way that I basically built the library. So I've included all the pictures here if you wanted to go and browse them and see some of the pictures and things of where people were recording. Um, this is available this way. So again, I took usually at least one picture embedded for each sound file if I could figure out which ones matched. In some cases, it was a little tricky because the, the descriptions of the photos might have only said something like this image or whatever. So, But you can go through here and browse them, and they're fun to see. So that's just a brief walkthrough of the metadata as it's laid out for the My Home crowdsource. Uh, I hope that's helpful for users of the library, and uh, thanks a lot.